Making a square video in Adobe Premiere is a piece of cake, but you want to make sure you have these settings in place before you start editing your project. This tutorial will show you the proper settings, as well as how to add some interactivity with your square environment, so stick around. Hit the subscribe button if you want to keep your Premiere skills sharp. The first thing you want to do in Premiere, once you've got it open and you've got a new project started, is to come down here to the project bin, select the new item button, and then click sequence. Now here in the new sequence settings, I'm going to select the DSLR preset for 1080p and 24 frames a second. Select the one that's right for the footage that you just shot. On the settings tab, we're going to change the frame size of the video. So first here, we're going to change the horizontal size to 1080 and keep the vertical size at 1080. And we see that change the aspect ratio to 1.1, which is our square video. We'll click OK. Next thing we want to do is to import our video footage. I'm going to drag this over here. Then we'll just drag this clip over into our sequence. Now, when you see this warning dialog box come up, you want to make sure that you click keep existing settings. And first thing we notice is that the video is uh, going to be, of course, larger than the stage here. So we want to adjust the scale of our video so that we get a nice border at the top and the bottom of our video. Now I want to trim the heads and tails off. I think the last take was the best one here. Trim the front. Doing a little thing and then cut that off right there. Drag this over to the beginning and let's zoom in. Now we see here that we can kind of see the transparent background because we adjusted the scale of the video and we do want to hide that and we're going to do that with our border. So I'm going to come down over to my tools and then select the square tool. Draw our square out. Now, if we don't have this feature turned on, I want you to click this wrench and then where it says snap in program monitor, make sure you have a check next to that. It's going to make it a little bit easier when we try to snap the side of this rectangle to the corner of our stage here. And we see that it snaps right there into place. Now, when we drag out the sides here in the bottom, it's not going to snap as nicely as it did for the corner. Uh, we're just going to have to eyeball this and make sure we can line it up as closely as possible. Do that same for the bottom. And we can also ensure that it's centered by doing our vertical and horizontal center. Another tip, I want you to take the hex code of the color for this rectangle and copy it. We're going to need it in a few steps. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a little uh, kind of a plate here for the main part of the stage and kind of play around with the squareness of this video. Uh, so I'm going to go over to my project bin. I'm going to click new item and then I'm going to click color mat. And I'm going to make the resolution slightly larger than the stage, and that's going to come in handy when we start messing around with the animation here. Uh, 1200 should be good enough for this example. Now we're going to paste in that hex code that we just copied earlier to make sure that the colors match. Click OK. Now we want to drag that mat onto our timeline, make sure that the length is the same. Next thing I want to do is add a text element to the stage. So I'll select the text tool here. And we'll type out the call to action. Do some formatting here, center it up. Vertical, horizontal. Move this over. Now we're gonna start getting into the animation of this plate here. We're gonna do kind of this reveal effect. And the way that I like to set my animations with multiple elements is to actually create a nested sequence. So I'm going to highlight these two elements and then right click and nest, name it whatever you want. Boom. Okay. So we've got our nested sequence here. So now what I want to do is I want to take this nested uh, plate here. Uh, let me flip this off. And what I really want to do is kind of use it in tandem with the video that I got in the background. So you can see I'm reaching my hands up, I'm grabbing something and then I'm pulling that down. I want to go up here to the effects control panel and I want to make sure I've got the stopwatch turned on for oh, not scale, but position. So I'm going to turn on the stopwatch for position to make sure that I can start inserting keyframes. So our first keyframe was created and then I'm going to scrub in the timeline to get to the point where I'm reaching up and grabbing the invisible element. And I want to then create a keyframe so that I can adjust the position of that element so that it's at the top or actually off the stage. Flip our layer visibility back on. So now I'm going to grab the slider for our Y axis and change the position of this plate so that it's all the way off the stage, off the screen, 
and kind of works with where I'm grabbing, which is also off the stage. Now I want to preview this just to see how it looks. Not bad, little adjusting I wanna do, I wanna tweak kind of the position so that it lines up with my hands better throughout the entire uh, length of the animation, but that looks pretty darn good. I also want this ending to last just a little while longer, so I'm gonna drag these two elements out. Oop, I gotta adjust the nested sequence just a little bit. Here we go, perfect. Now I can start playing around with the keyframes to get that animation exactly how I want it. Cool, so I'm pretty happy with that. What I wanna do now is I wanna actually export it um, out of Premiere. So I'm gonna go up to File, click Export Media. Now these uh, export settings should be pretty standard for this project here. I'll keep the format at H.264 and the preset at Match Source, High Bit Rate. I don't wanna export the audio, so I'm gonna uncheck that box. And I can either click Export or, if you haven't ever used this before, you can click the Publish button or Publish tab here and you can actually publish this video to any of your external accounts, the ones that, that Adobe supports. So I can do Facebook here. Um, I could also scroll down and do Twitter. Um, if I wanna do Twitter, I make sure I check the box and then use the sign in button there to sign into my Twitter account. And that video will publish right from Adobe Premiere into Twitter or Facebook or wherever you choose. And there you have it. That's how you create a square video inside of Adobe Premiere. As always, I'm Steve Kwasinski. It's been great having you here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.